Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track here, Monday, now the 28th of July, 2025. Thank you very much for tuning in to today's video. As we close out the month of July, I figure let's take a look at the tropics, see what's happening out there. We do have some activity in the Central Pacific of all places. So we're going to start with that, then we're going to take a look at how things are shaping up as we wrap up the seventh month of the year. And I'm going to get ready to head out to Arizona with one of my colleagues to be ready for a little bit of a signal in the monsoon flow out there, a little bit of a moisture return, and then it's going to get very hot again out that way. So we're going to talk about all of that, and I'm sure a couple of other things will scooch in to today's topics as well. All right, let's get started, shall we? First of all, as I mentioned, the Central Pacific, there it is. You have Hurricane Iona, Tropical Depression 2C. So let's click on that tab. There it is, the Central Pacific. All of a sudden, like, where did this come from? Well, I wasn't paying too much attention, to be honest with you, over the weekend. But here we are, nevertheless. These couple of areas here, three total, actually. Uh, Iona, TD2C, and then another area that's trying to develop over the coming days. Not to worry, though, if you're over here in Hawaii, neither of these systems are going to be heading in your direction. But as Iona, as an example, passes south, that could send some pretty big waves up this way, so the surfers could enjoy that. Certainly, south-facing beaches throughout the Hawaiian Islands uh, could get some bigger wave action in the coming days. And then, of course, anybody that's not used to that kind of thing, you need to be very, very careful. This is what it looks like over on the Tropical Tidbits dashboard, which is a wonderful tool. Infrared satellite of Iona sitting out here. Pretty good core structure overall. Water temperatures out this way are not particularly warm. They're not like anomalously warm, like exceedingly on the positive side or anything. It's just a really good overall environment. Lots of moisture in the mid-levels, and boom, here you go. Category 1 hurricane uh, in the area. Now, fortunately, it is forecast to pass to the south of Hawaii over the next several days, well to the south. And as such, any direct influence will be really, really far away. But this will generate those swells that will eventually come in, as I mentioned. So, if you're planning to head out to the String of Pearls, make sure you check the local weather service forecast office. And don't forget, it is very easy to do so, no matter where you're going, what you're doing in terms of checking the weather. It's really easy. You already pay for it if you pay taxes in this country. Weather.gov, weather.gov. Put the zip code in of the area that you're interested in. And voila, like magic, it's all right there. And anything that's important usually is denoted in red right there on the landing page. And this will tell you all about that if you're headed to Hawaii and you're worried about rip currents or high surf or that kind of thing. And, as I said, weather.gov, applicable to anywhere you're headed in the lower 48, Hawaii and Alaska too, outside of the lower 48, right? So, Atlantic Basin time couple of areas of interest. This certainly, and everybody got up this morning, we saw that. We're like, hey, wait a minute, where'd that come from? Um, not much of it. A few thunderstorms popping up with it. It certainly looks interesting. Pretty good outflow with it overall, but there's just not much there at the surface. Not a surface low or anything like that. So it's just a little puff of cloud sitting out here. Uh, meanwhile, down in the deep tropics, the main development region, tropical wave, another tropical wave, this has got some energy with it. This does. Uh, and boy, you can really see the uh, the jet coming out here, the Eastern African, the African Easterly Jet, if I can say it, pushing that Saharan air layer out into the Atlantic. And you look at this and you think, all right, well, at the end of July, there are some deeper thunderstorms out here now. We've got this little system, some convection in and around uh, Central America. Yeah, I mean, it's almost August. Shouldn't things be popping? And then you go look at the sea surface temperature anomalies, and you think, oh, yeah, uh, canary current all the way through the main development region. Caribbean's cooled off a little bit, but we can overlook that now. Gulf's still very, very warm, as is the Northwest Caribbean, Southwest and Western to Western Atlantic. You, you check all these boxes, you think, well, this should be pretty active right now in the Atlantic. What's going on? We've got this La Nina look happening, especially out here. 
in the Central Pacific. Uh, and by the way, speaking of Central Pacific, that is where Iona is, and this is the the direction it's going to be heading. Yeah, those water temperatures are below average. And this is what is just comical about how the weather works. The Atlantic, well above normal in some areas. Certainly you can see that as well as I can. It's above normal. No hurricanes at all. Zip, nothing out there. Not even an area of interest. Central Pacific, colder than average, just south of Hawaii, stretching for, I don't know, a couple thousand miles at least. Vast stretch of cooler anomalies. Bam, Hurricane Iona. What? It's just goofy. It's definitely goofy. So you look at all this and you think, well, all right, the Atlantic should be primed and ready to go. And then you look at this and you go, oh, now I understand. At least I can look at this and immediately think, now I understand. The mid-level dry air and probably warm air as well, very, very prevalent right now. And there's a lot of reasons behind this that is pretty technical and getting into it might lose some people. But we're just in a very unfavorable pattern right now in the atmosphere. So the water temperatures can be 90 degrees deep down five, 600 meters, whatever, almost, I won't say boiling, that's hyperbolic, but warm water temperatures are not enough to get hurricanes to happen. You have to have moisture in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. You cannot have that dry, warm air over moist, warm air. It just doesn't work. You don't have the instability. And all of this, let's see what color I can use. I guess sky blue will pop over all of this. This is your very dry air mass that's just lurking out over the Atlantic like a warm blanket. And it is not going to allow for deep thunderstorm activity to get going. It's just not how the physics works. So until and unless, because there's no guarantee this will ever really go away, I, mean, I don't know the future for sure, we assume that it will once we get through August and into September and naturally things start to change. The atmosphere starts to cool off, but the oceans are going to stay nice and warm. Maybe like we've seen these last several seasons, really since 22. It's only a few seasons there, and maybe that does not make a trend quite yet. But that back-loaded season feel feels like it's coming again this year. So as, as we start August, I don't see that this is going to change anytime soon. Now, that doesn't mean that it won't. But I don't see it that way right now. And the global models agree with me. All right. First, speaking of globals, let's just look real quick at the old GFS here. This is the 5,000 foot winds and your mean sea level pressure. Here are our three disturbances. There is Iona. This is the other area of the Hurricane Center. What is that? TD, whatever. Let's go see. I want to get it right. You can tell I haven't really paid much attention to, to Mark, to C sitting out there. And this is another area that could develop over the coming days, all in the Central Pacific. Very, very weird. Uh, again, I really wasn't watching this very closely. I was working on other stuff. Nevertheless, here we are. So these systems head on out generally to the west. And look, you can clearly see uh, this high pressure to the north. Very well outlined here. Deep layer ridging to the north. These are caught in the easterlies here. Easterly winds coming from the east. And this is a no-brainer. This is an easy one overall to forecast. All that activity moves its way to the west, well south of Hawaii. So no worries there for direct impacts. All right. What about the Atlantic? Now, there are a couple of areas to watch out here. Uh, a little piece of energy sitting here. There's another tropical wave that's come off Africa. Uh, this is the little reflection in the modeling of that feature that is to the south southeast of Bermuda, northeast of Puerto Rico. But really, that is about it. There's nothing else out there in the vorticity signature over the next week or so. Now, this tries this piece that just came off to amplify a little bit here. Uh, East Pack starting to get busy again. This might add some more moisture to the southwest. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the Atlantic just looks closed for the foreseeable future. Uh, I mean, you can see the little reflection there. And yes, I am fully aware, one thing I did pay attention to, uh, the model that Euro AI or whatever sending like an Andrew Katrina-esque type storm, hurricane, whatever, into the Gulf, uh, mid-month, whatever, coming up. 
and some people are sharing that in their videos or on their thumbnails. I mean, come on. Why are you doing that? But, you know, I'm not the gatekeeper of other people's videos. You do what you like, but no, nah, I don't see that happening. That, that doesn't mean it won't happen. Again, I do not have, I've said this before, the Biff Tannen 50 years of hurricane history. Remember in Back to the Future Part 2, he got that book, 50 or 100 years or whatever it was of sports history, and he made all that money, went back and gave it to his younger self. I don't have that for hurricanes, so I don't know but I highly doubt it. The pattern doesn't support that. There's a non-zero chance that it could happen from that piece of energy right there. So let's see what the GFS operational does with it as we move out into time. Kind of buries it in the Caribbean. And we are now out at one week. This is August the 4th. And there's just not much happening out there overall. And we can kind of see why. Drop me out of the frame just to pay attention more to the maps here. The overall relative humidity, the moisture and all that, no, it's just not there. I mean, look at all of this dry air that is still very, very prevalent. Surface pressures up here, 1032 millibars up there near the Azores. That's just not going to do it. We're not ready yet. Now look, to be fair, August the 4th, we're usually, we are usually not where, uh, on the climatological scheme of things, where we would expect a lot of activity. It's a couple of weeks later, around August 20th. You've heard this numerous times. If you've been tracking storms for you know any length of time at all, August 20th through eh, late October begins the big peak, the ramping up of activity. August 4th is not August 20th, so maybe a couple weeks will be all it takes. We'll see, but there's some goofy, unforeseen early on in the year by some of the forecasters the bigger agencies that are happening now that might reduce the overall activity of the season. But, but, that does not tell us that there won't be any hurricanes to worry about later on. And need I remind you, the remnants of Barry, some of that energy, hundreds dead in Texas from the flooding, Chantal, weak tropical storm into North Carolina, property damage, lots of financial problems now for people that are dealing with that flooding. The impacts are what matters. We have definitely had impacts this year. So it looks weird out there right now. Will it stay that way between now and November 30th? I don't know. I'm just telling you what I see right here, right now. One would think that as we get further along, things will start to change naturally and we will head towards a more active period. But for now, enjoy the quiet. We've been through a lot hurricane-wise these last many years, really since 2017, when the major hurricane drought ended with Harvey. And we had a couple of small, tiny breaks in between then and now, but it's been pretty tumultuous. And tumultuous, and with everything else happening in the world, a quiet hurricane season wouldn't be a terrible thing, obviously. All right? You don't need me to tell you that. So while it is quiet, one of the most favorite parts of being a geographer by degree. And in geography, I studied meteorology, I studied climatology, and of course, maps and how weather impacts society, people, places, and things. It's a very fascinating field. And in that, the Southwest monsoon is a truly interesting phenomenon. It is the one time that you can really easily see nature and the earth like mechanically changing. Another opportunity is if you go see a volcano. That's the earth growing more earth, right? Like the earth mechanically doing what it does. The weather is different. The weather is where, uh, you know, it's raining, it's storming, it's snowing, it's windy, whatever. That is an effect. That's affecting, like A, affecting the earth. The monsoon creates these floods, dust storms, whatever. Uh, the aeolian process out there, and I know I'm getting deep into the weeds here, but it is truly an opportunity to see geology changing, geologic time getting sped up when you especially get rainfall over these arid areas. And to me, that is very fascinating. Lots of pictures of lightning that people take. That's neat. That's interesting. I'm scared to death of lightning because you basically get no warning and then you're just done. Uh, but the dust storms, the dust devils, I mean, even the lack of rainfall and the high temperatures out there, Fires, there's currently one going on in the North Rim area of the Grand Canyon and others. All of that is deeply fascinating to me. 
So I'm going to go out and observe it, study it, report on it, starting Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and actually the first 10 days or so, uh, almost the first 10 days of August. So this is just a little preview. National Weather Service Flagstaff slowly seeing an increase in moisture. Unfortunately, getting all that moisture up to the canyon area, uh, Grand Canyon and vicinity, is going to be hard to do. Going to need some help from a Pacific dying tropical cyclone, probably. Seven-day forecast for Tucson, Sierra Vista, and vicinity. My good friend Jeremy lives out there, and uh, down in Sierra Vista. Hope, hopefully, I can see him. Look at that. Finally, 50% today. By the time I'm out there with my colleague Scott, Wednesday will be our first day. Out, we're flying out tomorrow night. Uh, 60%, 70% Thursday. It's going to be. It's hard. It's hard to find the right storm. It's like whack-a-mole. It really is. But we will be live just like we do during severe weather season. So I hope you tune in for that on our YouTube feed. And we will see what we get. It's going to be really interesting. We'll be live Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then we might do some stuff on Saturday back in the Phoenix area where it's going to get really hot once again. Like 110, I think, is the forecast for Phoenix next Saturday. Hey, look, I'm wearing the same shirt. How about that? Yes, I own more than one shirt. I just have a lot of those. I have 14. I counted them. They're sitting right over there on my desk. The other desk in here, I have 14 of our maps left. Got another order last night, came in. I said, hey, all right, somebody else bought one of our maps. I know it's not been a very busy season, but if you want to track one of these, especially you know one of these upcoming storms, especially if you're a teacher, school's coming back in, not a bad way to spend $20, in my opinion, because I drew that myself a long time ago, right at the beginning of my career. That is my original artwork. Drew it in Adobe Illustrator on a Mac way back in the late 90s. Modified it over the years. It is my very own poster size paper tracking map. You can get yours, 20 bucks flat rate. I'll ship it to you. Fold it up nice and neat. So it only costs a couple of dollars to ship. Used to ship them in tubes, but man, that started to get really expensive. And these would be like $40, and that's ridiculous. I'll post the link to all of this in today's video discussion. If you want to purchase one, I literally have 14 left, and I will take some with me, folded and ready to go. All I gotta do is address them and send them to you, even while I am while I'm out there in the Southwest. All right. So get yours now before they're gone. And once September gets here, it's trying to get me out of here. Uh, you'll be ready. I say September. I mean, we could probably have some activity in later uh, August, but at least the first part of the month, as we close out July. And enter August, it does look pretty quiet. So not much to track anytime soon, which I think we're all fine with that. I know I am, because I want to go to the desert southwest and not worry about any hurricanes coming. And it looks like that will be the case. Fingers crossed. Have yourselves a good rest of your Monday. I'll come back tomorrow and give you another look at things before Scott and I head out. Until then, and forever, I am Mark Suttoth. That's always funny to say, isn't it? Anyway. I am Mark Sutter. Thank you for tuning in. I will talk to you some more tomorrow.